I'm in Santa Monica in California. Today I'm going to be making a video about Stan Laurel of Laurel and Hardy fame. Stan Laurel lived the final days of his life here in Santa Monica and he had moved here from Malibu because he couldn't get a TV signal there. I'm just making my way to the apartments building where he'd passed away in 1965. And this is the building. 849 Ocean Avenue, Santa Monica. He died here in 1965 after suffering a heart seizure with his wife Aita and the nurse at his side. And he had been in ill health since suffering a stroke in 1955. And during his last night he was cared for by the same male nurse who attended to Oliver Hardy before his death in 1957. He had been living in semi-seclusion for the last 10 years of his life. And I believe his apartment would be the second floor one with the balcony here. To show you the entrance of the building. Even though he was a very well-known celebrity, he still had his name in the phone book when he was living here. And he used to answer every piece of fan mail that he would receive. Just a shot from across the street so you can have a better view of the building. Stan Laurel had gone to America on the same ship as Charlie Chaplin. They were both members of Fred Carno's army, a troop of British performers. Stan was Charlie Chaplin's understudy for a number of years, but it appears that the two men had a falling out. Charlie Chaplin failed to mention Stan Laurel in his detailed autobiography. A letter that Stan Laurel wrote in 1957 and only discovered a couple of years ago Seems to confirm there was a quiet feud between the two men. OK, this is Bedford Drive in Beverly Hills. i got number 718 North Bedford Drive here. Just wait for this car to pass and cross over. Stan Laurel lived here from 1929 to 1930. And it's one of the few of his of the houses that he's lived in that are still standing. Laurel began his film career in 1917. He met Oliver Hardy in 1921 when they both appeared in the film The Lucky Dog. They did not become an official team until 1927. They would go on to make over a hundred films together. They are considered one of the most successful comedy duos of all time. The 1930s was a particularly successful decade for the duo, with films like Way Out West, Sense of the Desert and The Music Box, for which they won an Academy Award for Best Live Action Short Film. But there was also tragedy in Stan's life, in 1930, Stan Laurel's son died at nine days old from a heart defect, and one of his brothers died in 1933. Stan was quite shy in real life, and Oliver Hardy was more easygoing and relaxed. Oliver Hardy was more confident in front of the camera as well, but Stan was the creative force behind the duo. He was the one writing most of their scripts, editing their films, and coming up with new ideas. Most of the duo's success was with the Hal Roach Film Studio. They left the studio in 1940 and appeared in movies for 20th Century Fox and Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. However, these films were not as well received by critics and fans, and they had less control over their characters and scripts. They made their last film in 1950, a French-Italian co-production called Atoll K. 
Now, I wanted to visit one of the surviving filming locations from a Lauren Hardy film. So I decided on the film The Perfect Day. In this film, Stan and Dolly are preparing to go for a picnic with family members. And this is the house from the 1929 film A Perfect Day. Most of the film is just outside here. They're sitting outside here in a car. They get a flat tire and all sorts. They get into a bit of a altercation with the neighbour. The the house actually belonged to Baldwin Cook, the actor who plays the part of the next door neighbour in the film. And half of the film was supposed to be the actual picnic, but they got so many gags from this location that they used the second reel of film that was supposed to be used for the picnic. And it's a very distinctive house. For some reason in the film, they don't show the whole roof. The car in the film would have been pretty much where that car is now. And there were most of the filming would have been done from this angle. Don't want to get too close, I'll do one quick sweep before leaving. After their film career had ended, they concentrated on stage shows, and this was their main source of income. They received no royalties whatsoever for the endless repeats of Lauren Hardy films on television. When Oliver Hardy died in August 1957, Stan Laurel was too ill to attend his funeral. He refused to appear on stage again or act in another film, as he had no interest in working without Hardy. Stan Laurel died on February 23rd, 1965, at the age of 74. He was cremated and his ashes buried at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in the Hollywood Hills. Okay, I'm back at Forest Lawn Hollywood Hills. And this is where Stan Laurel was buried. Okay, we've got the grave of Buster Keats in here. One of the big stars of the silent era. He was on the par with Harold Lloyd and Charlie Chaplin. Buster Keaton did not like to work with a script. He preferred to improvise his scenes. He would do most of the physical stunts in his films and he also wrote, directed and produced many of his own films. He was close friends with Stan Laurel and attended his funeral. At the funeral, he said, Chaplin wasn't the funniest, I wasn't the funniest, Stan Laurel was the funniest. Mr. Keaton died the following year at the age of 70. Very unusual vehicle here, I have to show you this. How cool is that? It's like something from Mad Max. Very cool. And here we are. Stan Laurel, 1890 to 1965. Master of comedy, his genius in the art of humour brought gladness to the world he loved. And he's buried here with his wife, Aida. Aida died in January 1980. Oliver Hardy was buried maybe two miles away from here in Burbank, which would be well, the cemetery is Valhalla Cemetery, and it's basically directly opposite here. And I will be doing a similar video to this, but on Oliver Hardy. So do keep a lookout for that. Okay, guys, we'll see you in the next video. Hey, won't you stay a little bit longer? 
sorry, didn't mean to, but I hurt you, cannot undo it, so please stay. I know that we've been fighting, but can we just hold up, maybe stay up, try to make things right?